raise emails to me said something along the lines of frame your talk as a public verbal blog. Although, of course, it was a helpful invitation, not an order. The idea seemed fine. I've written lots of blogs in the last seven months. I kind of enjoy that gush of words on a topic that's grabbed my attention and then reading it back later to find out what I think. But then the other week, as I started putting fingers to keyboard, I realised it was much, much harder to blog to order on a particular topic and to a particular deadline. In fact, I realised that somehow I'd agreed to do yet another assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I distracted myself with some research and found out in their first presentations, 91 people registered on thinking strategically and 107 on managing systemic change. There were 19 of us who did both, a whole year, back to back. I thought about how different we all are, all the different backgrounds that led us that, to that point. Needless to say, I felt stumped as, I, as to how I could reflect the experiences of everyone. So now I'm going to stick to what I know, my story, in the hope that it can give you some insights into the experience of being a student of systems thinking and practice. My first exposure to systems practice was actually back in 1996. The King's Fund piloted new ways of working in health at just three sites in the country. Newcastle was one of them. I was in a volunteer management role at the time, part of a system of people involved in hospital discharge, which was one of the topics of concern in the programme. Although we all went around saying whole systems working and experienced it as different to the way we normally work, I never realised at the time that there was a whole discipline of theory and research behind it. The other week, I tracked down the consultants that worked with us. Julian told me that they always struggled with how much theory to include in the work they did. They started off expecting everybody to be fired up about it, but soon learned that lectures on autophoresis appealed to very few participants. So it's hardly surprising their later work looked theory light, at least from the outside. So it's only now when I look at their book, Working Whole Systems, that I see the foundation that they were working on and recognise all of the names and the references. The pilot finished, I changed jobs, but some sort of seed had been planted. It was about 10 years later, after I'd got my MBA, that I was browsing the Open University's website one evening. I'm, I'm pleased to know I found out I'm not the only person that does that now. <laughs> um, and came across the residential course Experiencing Systems. The systems word rang enough of a bell for me to read the detail. I attended the residential in 2007, which I think was its last ever presentation, and finally made the conscious connection with the discipline of systems. The connection cast a new light on everything that had been before. The systemic aspects of my MBA and development management studies started falling into place. I was reading books and papers from the field, but fe felt lost as to how to put it into practice, especially when those around me did not have similar interests. So when I saw the first indication that the AU were introducing the postgrad program, it felt as though it was being written for me. I could not bear the thought that others may do the courses, and I hadn't, in no time at all found myself signing up. At one level, describing the experience of studying is easy. I read a lot, I type, I underline, I highlight, I blog, I jot notes, I draw diagrams. I'm curious, I'm frustrated, I hate it, I love it, I never want to look at it again, but then I find myself coming back for more. When you're engaged in these ex everyday activities, alongside work and trying to have a family and social life, my husband put that word in, <laughs> it's hard to appreciate what you are learning. Not in the sense of new explicit knowledge, but in the sense of how you are changing. I spent a year cocooned in books and assignments, and somewhere along the line I emerged as something akin to a systems practitioner. It won't come as a surprise to everyone here that the transformation was an emergent property of lots of different elements, including the four books that are being launched today. It's odd that even though I ceremoniously gave those books space on my bookshelf at the end of April, they all seem to end up back in the lounge or on the bedside table from time to time. They obviously mean more to me than just texts I had to get through. So one evening as I walked home from work, I started thinking about what each of them mean to me now. <coughs> we didn't rehearse this, Ray, did we? Oh, it's really, really interesting. <laughs> Systems thinkers makes me feel as if I have roots, a connection to the history of the community I identify with. I've known some of the names for years in the form of dutiful referencing, but the names have never come out of the brackets before. What I love about the book is that each chapter takes roughly the same type of time it takes to brew and drink a mug of tea. And at that end of the time, curled on the sofa, I've connected with another person, history and context behind a now familiar body of ideas. 
Systems approaches makes me feel determined and action-oriented. It's not just about the whole approaches, but you can pull out ideas and techniques and drip feed them into work. Some bits I just remember, they've become a part of my repertoire of doing. Other times I'm looking back at the book to remind myself of finer details. On to systems practice, and I get a sense of being, because it helped me to get to know me. This book evoked most discussion on the course forum. It was hard. I have some social science in my background, but it still goes against the grain of my westernised brain to be thinking from a postmodernist stance about psychology, philosophy, discourse, epistemology and institutional change. Not just learning about it, but using that to challenge and change how I think and do. Finally, social learning systems. That makes me feel connected as it helped me to look to and appreciate those around me. Whilst I've always had a quest to learn, I've never approached my daily working relationships with an understanding of the opportunity for social learning. Learning in formal training sessions, yes, but not an everyday process of interacting and reflecting together for the purpose of improving what we do. The reason I started the courses was a personal and quite insular desire to be better at my work and know more about systems. But somewhere along the line, even that changed. There were a few lines of text in social learning system that finally tripped the switch, although I really recognise I've been primed by all that went before. So in the most recent chapter by Etienne Renger, he talks about the fact that each of us has a unique trajectory through a landscape of practices, a trajectory that creates a unique point of view and a unique identity. That uniqueness is our gift to the world. I realise I've been learning all this system stuff and then feeling disappointed that others around me haven't. Suddenly this became my responsibility, my gift. I'm, into the, I'm their bridge into systems practice. This is not an easy role to take on. When you're a change agent working inside an organisation, it's like a game of chess. You have to pick your moves, pick your timing, and it seems that I too have to try and temper the theory. People seem afraid of theory. They don't recognise the practical practical possibilities it can bring, something an academically minded practitioner like me finds very odd. So what I do is similar to parents who work out creative ways to get vegetables into the diet of children because <laughs> they know it is good for them. <laughs> From time to time I wonder whether this covert approach is ethical. <laughs> but when someone gets it, has that aha moment and becomes excited about what they can achieve, you know the subterfuge is worth it. Thank you very much.